Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, and today I'm here to share with you a short segment on the Pantone color of the year, Radiant Orchid. It's in the violet color spectrum, so it transfers over from Radiant Orchid to lavender and purple. It's a color of imagination and spirituality. It recognizes creativity and leads to higher ideals. The combination of red and blue represents the union of the body and the soul, a balanced life with harmony between our mind and our emotions. Florists and flower growers everywhere are rejoicing on the choice of Radiant Orchid as a Pantone color of the year. Why? Because there are so many natural floral materials in that color spectrum. Liatris, carnations, roses, heather, hydrangea, mini asters, and of course the orchid. And this is just a few. Radiant Orchid is a fabulous color for the floral industry. Radiant Orchid is on the blue side of the color wheel. So the terracotta from the yellow isn't quite as fabulous. But if I cover this with the silver tree leucodendron in that gray-blue color, oh, look how fabulous that will be. So to work with this, I go through and I pull off the leaves from the lower branch. Looking at just the good ones. I don't want anything that's damaged. As I flick, pick through, they're mostly fabulous. There we go. Then, starting at the base of the pot, using the Oasis glue strips, pulling them off, adhering them around, and then once they're down, pulling it off. And then individually, looking at the leaves, making sure that I put the pretty side outward and letting them just hang over the edge so that I can fold them down later and finish it off. Overlapping. And just adhering them directly to the pot. Working my way around. I get a total coverage all the way around the pot. To finish the bottom, put a single glue strip right at the base, pull that off, and then just tuck each of the leaves inward so that they bond down. Sure, everything stays down. Then around the sides, clip them so that they're relatively even. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want them to be roughly the same. And then going back with another layer of glue strips, you're going to fish scale over the top of the first layer, taking, pulling it off, setting the glue strip so that it overlaps goes partly onto the pot and partly onto the leaves. Wrapping that all the way around and then going back and layering your leaves right over the top. As I work my way up the pot, here I have three tiers. Then I get to this last little segment. First, I put glue strips on the inside so that again I can wrap them around and finish off this edge. Then I go back and add glue strips on the outside. Coming up and onto the lip of the container and then peeling it free. 
and do that all the way around. Go back and pull off the interior. And then as I place the leaves, I bring them down, figure about how far I want it to be, up, over, and then wrap it back or down. Then repeat that, layering, up, over, and down, just pressing it into place. You can see how easy it is to totally finish off the edge of the pot, up, over, and down. Now for the flowers. I'm just going to use a liner with wet foam, all prepared. But it's not as deep as the pot, so a tiny piece of styrofoam right into the base, then setting this in. And now I'm ready to design. And everything can go upwards so I don't conceal my pot. I want to keep this showing. I'm going to start with some of the liatris, bring in a nice dramatic vertical line, coming up tall in the back and then stair-stepping downward, but keeping it upright. And then pulling the eye down to the accent area with a bit of hydrangea. And we all know hydrangea will last better if I dip it in alum. So just a little bit of alum, dip it, and then place it right down at the base to add an accent area to the design. Now I just want to reinforce my lines and expand out to the side. So I'm going to add the roses and the orchids. Bringing the roses in, mirroring that line of the liatris, find a little spot to tuck in here, and then bringing it in. And again, stair-stepping your eyes downward. Making sure I get a good two-inch insertion. Then coming back with the orchids. Letting them come out to one side. And then out to the opposite side. And then not wanting it to be flat, bringing more of the roses in, letting them come around to the back and fill in. To finish the arrangement, I'm going to use the leftover bits of the silver tree leucodendron, bringing the color up into the arrangement, letting it come up with the roses, and then also letting it come down to help break the line of the container in the front. And then filling in with some of the heather, getting even more brightness. Letting it extend outward. Out the side. You can see how it just explodes with color, adding texture maybe towards the front. And then to make sure that I cover all the foam, taking the little carnations in that same radiant orchid color and tuck them down very low, right at the base, finding a hole, concealing the last bits. And then as I work, turning it to look for spots that need another carnation. Returning to the color wheel, Radiant Orchid is the fusion of red and blue, the combination of body and soul. And it's a visible reminder of the connection we all have, belonging in the global community. What a fabulous color for the color of the year. Radiant Orchid is going to be my color this year. For more creative inspiration, check us out on the web. You can find us at flowerschool.com if you've got questions, want to chat, need help, contact us through the website or by telephone at 1-800-888-4444.
819-819-8089. And as we all expand our communities through the digital age, feel free to contact me through email at leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. For now, it's your turn. What are you going to do with the wonderful color Radiant Orchid? Have fun and do something you love.